Alright guys, welcome to my Q&A video. Yes, I'm blonde. But it's still me. Um, a lot of you have submitted questions and I tried to pick out like a wide variety, but also, I mean, there was just so many that I kind of had to narrow it down. So hopefully I answer enough questions that, you know, will fill you guys in a little bit about me and just, you know, how I go about hunting and kind of, you know, all the little details. So that being said let's get started um my first question is um what is my background um what drives me slash um you know what got me into hunting so a little bit about me i guess i'm originally from pennsylvania uh i now live in missouri i moved out here because of college um and so now i'm living out here um I've hunted Missouri the last three years, I guess. This is my third year, I guess. Um, and I just kind of like fell in love with it. Um, I have always hunted a lot of public, um, even in other states. Phone needs to stop. Um, and so, you know, Missouri was just like another state for me. And um, I just have had a lot of fun figuring it out. Um, so yeah, I guess, I mean, you guys have seen my video, I'm sure, so it's kind of a little bit about me, but um, my dad is the reason that I started hunting. He took me out when I was like literally just in, just able to walk. He was, you know, taking me along, and so that's kind of how I got into the woods. Um, I killed my first deer rifle hunting um, when I was 12. It was a doe, and honestly, I was super bummed out. I almost gave up hunting the same day because when I shot her, she, like, let out this, like, bawling sound, and I was, like, terrified because I grew up raising, like, livestock and horses and all that kind of stuff, and I was like, <gasps> like, oh my gosh, how could I just do that to an animal, you know? But, you know, I was kind of depressed and upset, whatever, but also happy that I, you know, got her. I mean, she obviously died, so, um, you know, it was, it was, it was just a, a weird experience, and then, uh, my dad wanted me to keep going out, because he wanted me to get a buck, or whatever, and I was like, no, I'm, I'm just tired, like, I'm, I'm kind of over this, so I stayed in the truck, while he went out and hunted, fell asleep, and he really wasn't even that far. He ended up shooting a buck, brought it back, got it loaded up into the truck, and I was asleep this whole time. And he was like, tapping on the window like, hey, wake up, I shot a buck. And I was like, no you didn't, like stop lying, cause he's a jokester, so I, would, I didn't believe him. And he's like, no, get out, get out, I really did. And I was like, st seriously stop, like I'm, I'm not in a good mood, like just leave me alone. He's like, come on, get out, and I was like, Fine, so I get out, and sure as shit, there's a buck in the back with my doe. And so, I don't know if it was just like, a little bit of jealousy, like, oh, that could have been mine. But I, I didn't give up, and I just, you know, I wanted to keep going. I was like, oh, I, I want to get a buck, kind of thing. So we ended up keep, kept hunting. I didn't shoot one, but I kind of think that was just like, the little spark to my drive. Like, you know, I, I gotta get a buck now. Like, I don't know, but... I just have gotten into it and you know I hunted with my dad growing up and then when I was 14 I got a crossbow for Christmas um, I think it was the first year that they were legal in Pennsylvania you guys can say what you want about crossbows but that is the reason I started archery hunting and I absolutely loved it um, and I am very grateful that I did um, I wasn't crazy with it like I wasn't you know shooting at 100 yards like I you know would take 20 yard shots and you know, what I was comfortable with, obviously, but, um, that's what got me hooked, and once I started archery hunting, it was just a totally new dynamic, like, I will not ever bash rifle hunters, but you don't know deer when you're only rifle hunting, like, you just, you don't understand them, um, you have to, you have to figure them out a little bit more when, when you have a bow in your hand, because you gotta know what they're doing and how to get them close, so, once I started doing that, I was, like, obsessed with it, I was like, oh, this is, like, cool, like, totally different than what I'm used to and so I did I started archery hunting and 
when I turned 16, my dad and I would get into fights sometimes because he's he's so like anxious, like shoot, shoot, like he's a kind of in my ear kind of guy. And I love him to death, but I'm like, I can't handle this. So I started going by myself and kind of just been hunting by myself ever since. I mean, obviously I hunt with friends and you know, my dad still, but for the most part, I just prefer to go alone. It's just like my, my getaway, my escape. And it's a challenge for me to, you know, accomplish everything that I do. And I could say I did it on my own and I'm, I'm proud of that. So that's kind of, I guess my background, a little bit of drive you know, why I love it so much, but anyway, moving on to the next, next question because I will probably talk forever. <laughs> okay, um, what states have I hunted? Um, so I've hunted Pennsylvania, Missouri, obviously, um, Illinois, Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Wyoming. I think that's it. Okay, what advice do I have for getting girlfriends, wives, slash daughters um, into hunting? Uh, I really like this question, although it's kind of like complex because every girl is different. Um, I would say just in general, if you're trying to get, you know, some girl in your life to go out, um, make sure, this is so important, make sure that their very first experience is great and I don't mean like just seeing a deer or two I mean like do your absolute best to put them maybe if you don't even shoot something but let them see a lot of things like don't let them get bored don't let them get cold um, or hot vice versa uh, just make sure there's a lot of things that are going on um, just to kind of get them to be like oh this is like really cool you know and then obviously you have to explain that it's not always like that or whatever um, but just make make their very first time or first couple times like just a lot of fun like um i don't know like for me growing up like i've always done it but like when i first started actually being able to hunt myself um you know pennsylvania's a little different because we would do deer drives in rifle season and that was just so exciting to me because you just it was like the anticipation of never knowing when a deer is going to come running by you and you got to be ready at all times and you're walking and just doing something so I think that was like what's exciting you know you got to do something that is gonna like spark their interest and keep them interested so you know make sure they're comfortable and not you can't you can't force it on them like they're they're either gonna like it and want to do it or they're not and you know sometimes just giving them that experience that way they they can at least be supportive of you you know maybe you might just have to kind of cut your losses and say okay you know she's at least cool with me doing it that's a win you know so <laughs> that's my best advice Okay, I really want to address this one for sure. I get this so ma like so many times and I never know how to answer it um, because I don't want to come off as rude or like, oh, she's, she thinks she's so cool because I, I don't think that. Um, but this question is, can you follow me? So like if I'm on Instagram and somebody asks if I can follow them, I just feel super awkward because I usually no I'm don't ask me this question I'm not gonna just follow you because you ask me to um, and I'm kind of at the point where like I just don't follow anyone <laughs> anymore um, because if I follow one person then I gotta follow everybody else and then you know it comes down to 18,000 people currently that I would have to technically follow if you know if I would follow that logic so no I'm really sorry I can't follow you I tend to just follow businesses um, professional photography pages or pages of people that I know personally like from real life not just online um, and uh, I guess you know just pages that I see as beneficial um, educational stuff like that so that's what I tend to follow um, if you know it's you know some just Joe Schmo that's like hey can you follow me I posted my deer that I shot I'm gonna be like awesome like that's great <laughs> you know like I'm happy for you but no I'm not gonna follow it just because you you know have one picture of a deer like I'm sorry I just I'm, I try to be professional with my page as much as I can yes I'm still just a Joe Schmo like everybody else but like I gotta kind of be particular so I'm not I'm not trying to be rude but I, I don't ask me to follow you because that's just that puts me in an awkward place um, and then I kind of want to address like that's mostly Instagram 
a lot of you have been like <laughs> like trying to request me on Facebook. I'm not gonna add you on Facebook solely because Facebook is like my personal like I use that really only for my family. I don't I don't post a ton of like stuff on there to begin with. So if I don't know you, I'm really sorry, but I just I can't add you. Um, same thing with Snapchat. That's like for my friends, like you know that I'm really close with and send a snap to or whatever. Like it's it's just. Instagram, I do have a, um, uh, like a Kate Moss Outdoors, uh, Facebook page. You guys can absolutely go follow that. Um, and you know, you can message me. I have no problem talking to people and like, you know, interacting and giving advice or whatever. That's fine. But I just, I can't follow everybody. So it just puts me in a weird place. So, sorry. <laughs> what is my opinion on the mullet comeback? <laughs> um... I don't know, really. I think it's interesting. I think some guys can rock it. Some guys can't. Um, kind of funny to me, but I don't know. I, I think it just depends on the guy. Like, some guys, like I said, they look good with it. Other guys, it's like, <laughs> okay, you need to, like, get rid of that. Okay, what editing software do I use? Um, so I use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, I... I I want to say I recommend it because a lot of people are using it, but it is a little pricey. Um, I, th I don't even know what it is a month. I want to say like 50 bucks a month, which is, I, if you're using it all the time, it's totally worth it um, because it is definitely a professional software. Um, but I mean, if you're just looking to do like quick videos, I, I don't know because I haven't ever used anything else. I just have always used it um, and I'm trying to get better with it. Like. There's just so many details and like intricate things that you can do with it that I just have yet to figure out. Like I'm, I'm self-taught with it for the most part, so I'm just kind of like <laughs> trying to get better with each video. Um, so if you guys like my editing slash don't like my editing, let me know. Um, videos like this I don't really take a lot of time on, but like my highlight videos I try to be like more particular about and just make them cool. So yeah, Adobe. What is my camera setup? Um, so my current filming setup, I do not recommend, first of all, uh, especially if you're self-filming. Um, I have a Sony a6300. Um, I got three different lenses. Um, I have a 16 to 50, 55 to... Wait, what is that? This one... Oh, just kidding. It's an 18 to 135. And then, a, oh, a 55 to 210. Um, so those are my three lenses that I rotate. Um, it just depends on, you know, what I'm filming as to which one I use. But um, anyway, the Sony, I love Sony, but it's not convenient for self-filming, at least the DSLRs. Um, I used to use a Canon, and it had the screen that would rotate and flip out so I could see myself, so I knew what I was filming. So this camera is a very difficult one to film with. Um, but it, it's good, it's just like if you have somebody else filming you, it's way better. Um, for anyone that is getting into filming, um, you know, especially self-filming, honestly, if you don't have any camera experience, start, like, start small. Um, don't go out and buy, like, the most expensive camera. Um, I, I, I guess just, you gotta kind of narrow it down to three points, like, for what is gonna work best for you. Um, like figure out how much camera experience you have um if you don't have a lot like i said don't don't go out and buy the newest thing um because you're not gonna you're not gonna have great you're not gonna have great um a great experience filming because you're gonna be so like oh i don't know how to use this and you know so get something that's easy to use like a, a handy cam honestly it's got a screen that rotates out it's a cheap camera I mean, there's all different kinds. You, you just have to kind of do your research and you can like ask me specifically. I honestly haven't like looked at the market recently, so I don't even know what's out there. But, um, you know, you, you got to know your budget. Obviously, don't go out and buy a $2,000 camera if you don't even know how to use it. Um, just you're just you're not going to have a great experience. So start small. Don't worry about it being like the greatest quality camera ever. Just, you know, learn the dynamic of what it takes to self film like you gotta like that's just a whole nother aspect you have to keep in mind you know your deer's over here your camera's over here and you you know you gotta 
your bow's this way and you gotta kind of situate yourself and it's it's just totally you know it totally throws you for a loop sometimes like I <laughs> like this year even I had issues I had my camera over here the buck was coming from this side but he was like angling straight at me so I didn't have a shot until he was way out past me and I'm literally like bumping the camera behind me trying to get it to swivel around so I can get a shot it was just craziness so self-filming is not easy so uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta determine if you're gonna do that or have somebody else film you. Um, but yeah, just, I would get something like a FDR, I forget what it's like, AX33 or something like that. Um, it's just a handy cam. It's, you know, got the rotating screen, super easy, lightweight, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. So yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I can't tell if it's recording. Uh, Okay, so next question. Who helps me hang my tree stands? <laughs> me, myself, and I. <laughs> um, I know it's not necessarily like the safest thing, but I have done it long enough that I just feel comfortable doing it. And I mean, I've literally been pretty much solo hunting since I was like 16. And I'm 23 now, so I've been doing it long enough that I'm just, it's just like second nature. I just pick a tree and hang my stand. And honestly, like, I, because I do everything myself, like, I'm, I'm out scouting. My strategy typically is, like, scout, 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 scout. And then, you know, whenever I figure out where I want to sit, you know, bearing wind and conditions and whatnot in mind, pick my tree, hang, hunt it the next day. Uh, mostly just because it takes me a little bit longer than what it would if I had to help, but that's okay. Like, I, I don't really ask for help. I'm not really that kind of person. Like, I just, I'm, I'm a go-getter, do-it kind of person. Like, I don't even think about, oh, I wish I had somebody to help me. I'm just like, oh, this is the tree I want. Let me go get my stand and hang it kind of thing. So, I do mostly a lot of stuff on my own, and I mean, you know, I, I do hunt with other people, but for the most part, it's just public land is just like... I get away, me, myself, and I. We're a great team, really. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, what is my dream hunt? My dream hunt is to shoot a caribou up in Alaska. And I mean like a giant caribou, not just any caribou. <laughs> uh, but it would be really cool to get it with a bow, but you know, when you make a trip like that, if it came down to it, I would absolutely use a rifle, but just, I don't know, I just think caribou are just gorgeous, and it's just not a common thing that people shoot, I guess, and so I've just always been, like, intrigued with it, like, the migration, and just, you know, Alaska itself is just awesome looking, so, yeah, caribou. Okay, what release do I use? Um, so I use the Spot Hog Wise Guy, and I'm not gonna lie, I really do like this release. Um, but I am always in the market for a new one because I have very small wrists and so, and it's not just this release, it's almost any release I've ever used. I have issues where it just like cuts my circulation off because I have to make it so tight to get it to stay in place and like fit snug. I, I it's a pet peeve of mine when my release is just like moving around and you know, my shots becoming consistent. Um, so I literally have to crank it super tight. And a lot of times this section of the release is way too long for me because I have small hands. Um, but in general, this is a great release. I really do like it. Um, and it is what has worked best for me so far. I really like the single hook. Um, I used to use a, a True Fire, like the clamp whatever it's called, the claw or whatever. I liked it, but when I tried the single hook, it just made me way more consistent, way more accurate. So, I don't know, I like it, and I love the fact that it bends back and gets out of my way. <laughs> There's so many times I'm like trying to do stuff or I'm filming or whatever, and I'm just like, get out of the way. <laughs> so, anyway, I do like this, but I don't know if you can see. I really didn't have it on long enough, but it does, it does leave marks and a lot of times it's like really deep. So I am looking for a new one, um, just to try something new, but yeah, it's a good release. Okay. What is the most trouble I have ever been in? 
have I ever been arrested? <laughs> no. Uh, I am a very, like, by the book kind of person a lot of times. I mean, growing up, I was very, like, what some may call a prude. <laughs> I don't know. I just, like, I raised animals and that was my focus. And um, if I, you know, wanted to, like, I showed them and stuff. So I was very competitive and... Uh, you know, if I wanted to do good with that, I had to like put my own money towards it. And so at a young age, I kind of had to grow up pretty fast. Um, like I was budgeting at like 12 years old. Um, <laughs> so I think that's where a lot of my like independent independence comes from, just because I'm used to doing things on my own. And, um, you know, I, so anyway, I had to be a good kid, like not get in trouble and stuff. Like I just... I was the kind of kid that like was terrified to get in trouble in school like I always was a good just you know chill kid I guess like I never went to parties or anything like that I would say I'm probably more rebellious now <laughs> like now that I'm like through college and stuff than what I ever was but even still like I've never been arrested I think the most trouble I've ever gotten in was I had a friend like a boy that like came and like I snuck out of the house and went to the backyard and we literally just like talked about his dad who's like an alcoholic and how he was like depressed about that like we didn't even do anything bad but my mom caught us and so it was just like awkward but yeah I, I, I don't know I was never a bad kid and I try not to break the law and stuff I mean you know I'm good so far okay, what music do I listen to uh everything <laughs> Literally everything. Um, I mean, country, rock, pop, hip hop, rap, you know, even the weird in between, like alternative, punk rock, like old school country, even some of the new stuff, EDM, like house music. I mean, literally pretty much anything. Is, I listen to music depending on my mood. Um, so I just have a lot of different genres that I listen to. I mean, like, even songs you would maybe think I don't know, I probably do know it, or at least know of the artist or something. Um, my Spotify is pretty. Um, so if you wanna find me on Spotify, if you ever need music suggestions. I do a lot of, like, long road trips, so I'm driving all the time, so I just have a ton of music that I just listen to, and I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm in the mood for this, and I'll click on that playlist, so. Yeah, I mean, literally everything. <laughs> okay, what is my biggest buck? Um, my biggest buck I shot in 2016, I think, in Kansas. And he taped out at 141 inches and I think like two eighths or something. Um, but he's just a big eight. Um, like his, G, his G2s are like, oh, I think like 13 inches a piece, so you know, around there. So he's just a big eight and honestly his brows like aren't even that big. So it's like when he first stepped out, I thought he was a giant six and I was like, oh my gosh, like what? Uh, but yeah, he, I, I love that deer. And that's actually my first bow buck too. So like co uh, compound bow. Um, so I was so stoked. Um, but yeah, here's a picture of him. So yeah, that's love that deer. <laughs> Okay, this one is very similar to the can you follow me question. Um, it says, where do you hunt slash what unit or county? Okay, guys, do not ask me where I hunt. I will not tell you. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be rude about it, but I do all of my own scouting. I mean, I use the crap out of Onyx, obviously. Um... And I work very, very hard to find my spots. Um, you know, private land is a totally different story, but um, I'm not going to tell you where I hunt because, like, why would I want everybody to come move in where I'm trying to hunt? Like, that just, that ruins it for me. Like, if you do your own work and, you know, find the same spot by chance where I'm at, good for you. That's awesome. But um, I'm not going to tell you and just have you, like, happen to stroll on by and come shoot a deer that I've been working really hard at. So don't ask me. I'll tell you maybe what state I'm in and maybe like general region, like West Central or something. Like, 
But uh, that's all I'm going to tell you because I work hard and I'm not going to just give my spots up because, sorry, do it yourself. <laughs> Actually, also, and that's like a big safety thing for me. Like, I am by myself and I'm a girl who's not very big, so... I'll shoot your ass with my bow, but like if you're coming at me and like trying to let, like that's just like That's dangerous for me to just give my location away all the time, too. So I'm like, I don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> what do I do for a living? <laughs> Good question. Um, so right now I just moved back out to Missouri to work for a company called Rugged Path Productions um Essentially, I'm a content creator, like we do videos and photo content for real estate agents, you know, we'll go to different houses and, you know, just take photos and stuff for their listings or um, we're trying to get into like weddings. We just did a wedding um, more for the venue to have a video of um, this past week we did and, you know, we're trying to branch into other avenues, but it's honestly very similar to what I do with my hunting stuff just take pictures and videos, edit them, and, you know, I mean, we may make money at it, but, um, the hunting side of things I do for fun, but it's very similar, so that's what I do for now. <laughs> it's been a, kind of a slow start, and I literally just started, but, um, up until now, I've just done, like, odd jobs, like, I, like, literally, I was a bartender, and, like, worked in a factory for a couple years and just, you know, whatever supports the hobby. <laughs> what is hunting pressure like on Missouri Public? Um, where I hunt um, currently, which I've hunted the same like general area for the past three years. Um, so like where I shot my buck this year, I maybe see like a total of four people all year like each season um so there's not a lot of pressure but i also did my homework and my research and found a spot like that um so i i really don't run into a lot of people i mean i'm way back in uh but there are other places that i have checked into and you know you can see a couple guys in the parking lot or whatever but honestly just from my experience i mean i haven't hunted a lot of different public in missouri but from what i've seen um, it's really not that bad. I think a lot of people have their own land around here, so, you know, public's pretty, pretty much open. Like, you can easily get away from people. Um, and trust me, I've hunted other states, like Pennsylvania, we have, like, the number one hunter per capita ratio or whatever. I mean, you can go to the parking lot at, like, you know, an hour before daylight and there's, like, 20 cars. You come back, you know, midday or whatever, and then there's, like, 20 more, and it's, like, crazy like you can see orange everywhere or whatever um wyoming was very similar when Brittany and i were out there like it felt like we were running into a guy every 300 yards so you know that just from experience missouri is really not super pressured i think maybe rifle season it's probably a lot more but i don't hunt rifle season so i don't really know um just from my experience there's not it's not too bad who are my sponsors <laughs> oh, I'd love to have this long list for you guys, but I don't have a single sponsor. Um, initially, okay, actually, there are companies that I do kind of like work for, uh, like, you know, like I'll get content for them and, you know, they'll send me product or whatever. Um, but I don't use anything that I don't 100% wholeheartedly believe in. Um, and I'm the kind of person, if somebody wants to send me something, that's great but I have to test it out and I have to love it and we'll go from there. Um, when I first really started like focusing my Instagram on just hunting, uh, you know, I had a couple companies reach out, whatever. Um, and I, I really wasn't looking for sponsors um, because I, I don't feel, I still don't feel this way, but I, I mean, obviously I'm improving. Um, but I, I never felt like I was like, a professional hunter that needed sponsors and whatnot now I would like I would like to have paying sponsors like anybody that's trying to throw free crap at me just get out of here because I'm not interested like free crap doesn't get me anywhere it just gives you a lot of stuff and I'm not I'm not giving like my time is valuable um, especially now because I do hunt a lot and it would be really great to have a little bit of an income 
just so I can support my hunting. Not, you know, I'm not trying to be some professional, like, on TV kind of thing, but, you know, it's, it is expensive, and so I'm not trying to do the free product game anymore, um, but I don't have any sponsors, like, I don't endorse anyone, like, anybody that I rep, like, I truly believe in them, and I will tell you the good and the bad. Um, I just, I believe in being fair like that, so, yeah. When hunting public land, what is the key to locating a hit list buck? <laughs> good question. There's a couple good questions in here. Um, well, I guess it kind of depends on what your definition of a hit lister is. Um, so for me, in Pennsylvania, the deer typically do not have the opportunity to get any kind of age on them compared to the Midwest. So growing up, I would pretty much shoot anything um, just because one, I, I would go weeks, days or weeks without even seeing a deer, let alone, you know, a nice buck. Um, so when given the opportunity, I wasn't about to pass it up. But I think the mentality is slowly changing. But for me personally, I hunt for what is in the area, like what's good for the area. Um, the buck that I shot this year, um, I didn't score him yet, but I think he would tape anywhere between 110, 115 inches. Um, and I, I believe he was a three-year-old. Um, and pretty much like anywhere else, um, I would not even like give him a second look because I believe in, you know, trying to shoot the oldest buck that I possibly can um, for the area. That being said, I've hunted this place for three years now, and that is absolutely the oldest oldest deer that's ever stepped out in front of me. Um, and I would say he's the biggest as well, like rack-wise. So I wasn't about to pass him up because I'm like, okay, this is like the third year now that I just am tired of seeing two-year-olds and... Not that there's anything wrong with shooting a two-year-old. If that's what makes you happy, absolutely do it. Like, I'm not going to judge you at all. Um, but just, you know, personal preference for me, I'm trying to shoot the older age structure. And to see a three-year-old was cool. And I was, like, absolutely, like, ecstatic to take that buck. So, um, you know, I mean, I guess in, in, for locating one, um, it kind of depends on the time of year. But for bucks... You definitely want to figure out where they're bedding and you know you can you can kind of start I would start with food source like for me I started in a field just you know I kind of was walking around scouting like on my on on foot looking for sign found some tracks um, I found some buck tracks you know there wasn't a whole lot of a whole lot of you know sign I guess in that area but you could tell I mean there was rubs and all that kind of stuff so I knew there was bucks in there sat the field waited just kind of chilling hanging out seeing what was going to happen had a couple young bucks step out I said okay now I know where they're coming from they're betting somewhere that way you know because they're heading this way you got to keep your wind in mind obviously like I'm I'm a big wind direction believer like um that can make or break your hunt I think um so, you know, once you figure out, okay, this is where they're coming out, so I, you, you get a little closer the next time, move in a little bit, go into the timber, um, sit and watch. Then the next day that I moved over, had them come out five yards beside me, same trail, and I'm like, okay, you know, and, I, and then I could see in, you know, where they were coming out a little better. Moved in a little more, moved in a little more. Eventually, you're going to find that bedding and, you know, where all that sign is and whatnot, and... If there's a mature buck in there, you're going to you're gonna figure it out pretty quick. Um, and essentially, the first group of bucks that I was kind of hunting, I I think I kind of screwed it up a little bit because of my wind. Um, well, the whole camera situation where I was trying to scoot it behind me, yeah, I ended up, like, spooking them a little bit. Like, they were like, oh, what's going on? Um, which I'm honestly happy that it kind of happened because I wouldn't have shot the buck that I did um, had I kept hunting these other ones. But... You really just have to figure out where they're bedding, where they're moving, and get as close as you can. Um, you know, and this is, I would say, more or less for public. If you have private land, um, you can hang cameras, obviously. I mean, every state has its own regs, so you gotta figure that out. But, um, you know, for public, you just, you know, 
put the pieces together really and I mean that's that's just what I do and it's always a learning curve like I'm honestly not shocked by anything anymore um <laughs> yeah I mean like I've been haunting my whole life and even certain years I'm like all right well that's new kind of thing so but for the most part bedding figure out where the most traffic is and you know kind of kind of go from there I guess um but it also just depends what you're haunting. Like if, if you're not trying to shoot the biggest, baddest, oldest buck and you're happy with a two year old that steps out, it's gonna be a little bit easier for you. But hit, you know, older mature deer, they're tough and you gotta, you gotta really get in on them. So uh, I guess that's like my best advice. It's kind of a lot, a lot of complex things that go into it. I mean, mapping, I, I'm a big map person. Like I said, I'm a big wind direction person. Um, you know, and, and you got to get in there and scout and put your hours in and, you know, you, you should have success if you're kind of taking the right steps, but it's, it's kind of a lot, I guess, a lot to explain. So a lot of you want to know, like my bow setup. Um, so I have a triax, Matthew's triax, um, and I absolutely love this bow. Um, I've always shot Matthews, um, but every year I go to ATA and I do my best to shoot every possible bow brand. And I just, I love this like brand. I just I like it. It's comfortable for me. The bows are a little bit heavier and you know, some people don't like that, but for personal preference, it keeps me very steady and I just like that stability. Um, so yeah, I got a, I got a Triax and I love it. I've got the Spot Hog Grinder, I believe it's called, um, sight on it, um, which is a five pin fixed sight. I don't, I really don't know if you guys can see this or not, but um, yeah, so it's a, it's a five pin fixed sight and it's got this wire that runs vertical um, down your sight, which is awesome for keeping you level. And I only say that because I honestly, sh I shoot so much better. Like the more things you can do to be consistent and keep everything the same, every shot, um, like it's, it's just one more thing to help you. So that's just like, I don't know. It just helps me stay upright, you know, and, and my shots are usually pretty great. Uh, and then I've got the Matthews QAD uh, drop away rest. I got the Matthews um, flatline stabilizer. I really like it. I think I might get a longer one next time just to see, just to test it out because I've always had like just a short stabilizer on it and I don't, I don't know if it'll help me or not, but um, I've never like ventured out into the stabilizer world. Um, I love this about Matthews. You can just like easily take your quiver off. Um, got an arrow missing. It's so awesome. Um, and then as far as my arrow setup, I've got the Gold Tip Hunter 500 spine um, with Max Hunter fletchings. I've got the Nocturnal lighted knocks because I love to have lighted knocks. And then I've got the Inner Lock 4 blade 85 grain broadhead. And a lot of you are probably like, why do you have 85 grain? Well. It just works best for my setup. Um, we needed a little bit lighter arrow and a little speed. Um, and I only say that because I just, I, I pull 46 pounds, so I just don't really have the, the punch behind it. Um, and honestly, like this setup is just like perfect for me. I get pass throughs, like complete pass throughs every time. So I do not have an issue with the way anything is. And I've actually kept this the same as last year. Um, this last like 2018 was the first year i used this setup and no complaints so we will stay the same this year so that is pretty much my setup nothing too crazy nothing too fancy you know but it works best for me and i really like it so yeah okay last question is what wait where is it Oh, what is my run and gun setup slash necessities? Okay, so this is just my pack and what I take out with me. Um, I can't show you like my stand, obviously it's out hanging right now, but 
So I have a Badlands pack that is the Sprint pack. Um, I think it's a female like version. Um, so it's it's kind of compact, a little bit smaller. It fits me really well. Like I, I love this pack. I think I've had it for like two, maybe three years now. Super convenient. Um, what I love about it is all the like zippers and like compartments and you know just buckles and just all kinds of stuff because. Like I said, I do everything on my own, so it's like I have to carry a lot of stuff. So half the time I'm either strapping my bow to my pack, uh, you know, sometimes a tripod or um, even like tree stands. Like when I'm going to hang a set, I'll clip my tree stand to the pack and carry my sticks and camera and be on my way. So uh, I love this pack, but I guess some of the stuff that I just take out with me, I don't even know what's in here. Um water obviously <laughs> snacks big thing um my knives i love outdoor edge they're like probably the best knives on the market super sharp i can cut through like f like gut and skin i think i got through four different deer before i had to sharpen these um so they're pretty awesome and then i have a, a knife sharpener that i somewhere up in here i take that with me just in case you know god forbid i need it um paper towels just you know if you if you want to bring gloves you can but i don't usually um some sent away i'm a big believer in playing the wind but sometimes it just switches up and you cannot help it and i have literally um had deer like like a lot of times i hunt off the ground too so um you know i have to get close to deer sometimes and i've had them literally five yards never knew i was there not every time, obviously I get picked off sometimes, but uh, I really do believe in this. Um, it helps a lot, especially if you're like sweaty and stuff. Like I'll hang a stand and then sometimes I'll haunt it and I'm like, oh, so hot. <laughs> so this helps for that. Uh, Multi-tool, it's dirty as hell, but never really needed that, I don't think, but I think that's just in case I happen to ever need it. Um, I usually have a little bit of racketer scented something in here um depends on the time of year early season is like food scented stuff um you know getting pre-rut i'll put some like i don't know if i have it on me but i'll put um some mock scrape lure or whatever and you know just kind of depends what what situation i'm in and what i'm i'm feeling like putting out if anything um what's in here nothing really um, this is a thermocell. This is a lifesaver. Don't run out of your stuff though, or you'll end up like me this season because I look like I had acne all over my face from how many mosquito bites. Uh, allergy meds because I have really bad fall allergies, and God forbid you run into something that you're allergic to. Uh, definitely good to have. Um, some kind of poison or something. I mean, I don't really have that issue, but. Some people might. Uh, grunt call, which I obviously don't really can call. I don't really use these, obviously, till later on. And even then, I don't use them a whole heck of a lot. But it's not always the worst to have. Um, really, that's like the main thing for my pack. Oh, in here, I got this little pouch that I attached keep my rangefinder in um and sometimes my cell phone like I'll, it's a nice place to like just store it and have it close you know if i need to use it real quick um yeah i love this pack it's really great um a lot of times in the main pouch oh chapstick i put that in here as well okay let's go chapstick <laughs> um the main pouch i usually end up carrying all my camera stuff which for that is just my tripod and or camera arm depending on if i'm in a tree or not uh my camera obviously and then two lenses that you know whichever two i'm not using um and then i think i have a couple extra sd cards lens cleaning stuff stuff like that um and then i've got safety harness for if i'm in a tree and then obviously just like my bow and that's pretty much it. Like, that's all I take on me. I try to keep it as lightweight as I can, but 
really it is kind of a lot of stuff like typically I'm carrying a camera I got all this stuff in my in my pack and then I got my bow and kind of got to be ready for either or or whatever so oh I also have this little clip thing that I put on here um, somebody actually sent me this um, it's just like a normal um, survival bracelet and I really actually like this not just for a bracelet but it's pretty nice um, because like sometimes when I'm up in a tree or whatever this thing gets so heavy like this thing is like 60 pounds sometimes depending on what I put in it and like I'm like I'm just like oh it's so heavy when I'm trying to lug it up the tree and so this is just kind of nice to like clip onto something quick or whatever so I can just like relax for a second um but yeah I mean running gun it's kind of my stuff I guess I <laughs> it can be difficult to run and gun with all this crap um a lot of times I just well honestly I'm, I'm scouting I'm always scouting like while I'm hunting and so I'm like okay you know trying to figure out where, what I want to do where I want to sit or whatever and then I don't really mess with a lot of this until I get situated and then I kind of just unpack and kind of organize and then I get my stuff set up but um, as far as like running gun in expecting to shoot something I don't I don't usually do that um, if I'm trying to film if I'm not filming, sometimes it can happen, um, but yeah, I usually have a designated spot. So that is my equipment, I guess. Um, okay, so hope you enjoyed the Q&A video. Um, it was fun answering all these questions. I know I get long-winded sometimes. You're gonna learn that about me. I just blah, 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 ramble on sometimes. Um, but yeah, it was fun, and if you guys liked my previous video with my buck that is what i strive to kind of film like and the kind of content that i'm trying to get out here um, for you guys um yeah i just i really enjoy filming and obviously hunting so um it's cool to combine the two and just have those memories to look back on um but if you guys are interested feel free to subscribe um like this video like my other videos or don't like them, that's fine too. Um, but you can also find me on Instagram, which is where I do most of my posting. Um, I do obviously post on YouTube, but Instagram is more of a day by day rather than a every couple weeks sort of thing. So if you want a little more insight, details, you know, behind the scenes kind of stuff, feel free to check my Instagram out. Um, and I do have a Facebook page um, that I'm trying to start using more. So um, yeah, and feel free to subscribe because I'm trying to get more video content. Um, I have a doe tag left and um, another buck tag, but I have to wait for rifle season to be over before I can use that. So I'm probably gonna shoot some does um, here soon. <laughs> So stay tuned for that and I'm hoping to share you, share that kind of stuff with you and take you guys along. So, all right. Thanks guys.